today on Be Something Wonderful, how remembering that your wish is always fulfilled manifests it now. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, good morning and welcome back to the beautiful island of Bonaire here in the Dutch Caribbean in the studios of Be Something Wonderful. Big video for you today. This discussion was huge with one of you and this is how it started. What a shift, so many amazing things happening in my life. It seems so instant and overnight. I really do get it. I'm remembering and imagining it all right now. The whole discussion that what, whether you're imagining your wish fulfilled, some unfolding in the future, or remembering your, that your wishes have always been fulfilled, remembering reality as you would have liked it to be, Neville got its revision, you're imagining it all right now. Memory is simply an imaginal image. Whatever you imagine, whether you believe it's a wish that you want to unfold as a 3D physical experience and what we call the future, even though it's all right now, or whether you're imagining something differently that you believe you experience in what we call the past, it's all happening here and now. They're all imaginal images. They're all potential frames of frozen light to be lit up and experienced here and now or not. They're all within you. You're all realities. And then the whole discussion came up. This came up in a, re, in a few, over the last few days. Tom, what about imagining it? So many coaches talk about that if you imagine it in third person, in other words, if you're seeing your imaginal scene like a movie and you're not, like Neville Goddard says, putting yourself in the action, seeing it through your imaginal eyes, that you're going to manifest it for others and not yourself. And that these coaches say they've tested this thousands of times. And, and, and got the same proof that if you imagine in third person, you create for others. But of course they're going to get that proof because that's what they believe. That's what they assume. That's their reality. Those are their assumptions. Remember, whether you're imagining in third person or first person, or it's just an assumption without a visualization, without a visual scene, or whether you're just daydreaming it, you're creating that reality, that memory, that image here and now. It's all you. There is no first person or third person or others. It's all you. You are that I am awareness. That's what this person's experiencing now. Because they said, as soon as I decided to really consciously create, that they, they believed they were struggling because they were trying to do things the right way what coaches and gurus were telling them to do, that they got to do it this way. They have to imagine it in first person. And this, person this person struggled with that because they would receive images. They could see themselves happy with their specific person with lots of money. And they were believing that that's not right. That's wrong. So they were creating this resistance or this idea that they're not imagining the reality correctly. They're not doing the processes or affirming correctly. When now they know that it doesn't matter whether they're daydreaming it, simply assuming it, first person, third person, all of it is imaginal activity and potential. It's all them. Now they're living their dream. This person doesn't, there's no evidence that, that they have to imagine third person, a first person. They've been just imagining it. Whether they're just seeing it like a movie, they're living it. It's all, this person goes, it's all me. I get it. I'm not struggling anymore. There's no difference. We create the idea of a third person first person or third person or others that are, that are getting things that we want, that we're manifesting it for them. You create your reality. You don't manifest for others. You shift to the reality, the parallel turn of the reality, that identity that sees others getting what you want. Do you see? You create that idea, but it's all you. You're not manifesting for them. They create their own reality. You're seeing a version of them getting what they want, and you creating a version of you that doesn't get what you want. It's all you by who and what you're being right now. This person said, I'm just relaxing and not trying to do any certain techniques any certain way, first person, third person, imagine, whatever. Just knowing that it's whatever I imagine and wish to be is it. And they, they say, oh God, 
I was just remembering it wrong. They use this idea that I've talked about. And I, I pointed to the 2002 movie, the remake of Solaris, where George Clooney plays the main character, Chris Kelvin, when he says that, that he was haunted after he got back from the planet Solaris. You can watch the movie. The planet Solaris is this, this planet of light that had that ability to show you the contents of your consciousness projected out, projected immediately into your physical experience. So you were these characters on the spaceship circling, cir um, um, uh, um, at, around that planet of Solaris, right? <laughs> Rotating, orbiting, that's right. <laughs> orbiting the planet of Solaris, the light planet of Solaris. We're seeing the contents of their consciousness projected out immediately, instantly. But remember, consciousness is always projecting and reflecting instantly, right? It's just whatever you're thinking or feeling. And it was showing this in the physical experience. And that main character it occurred to him that he was remembering reality wrong. He was remembering his wife, who died by suicide, wrong. Somehow he, he declares, I was wrong about everything. When you're not remembering reality as you would like it to be, or remembering your life as you would have liked it to be, or imagining your life right now as you would like it to be, then you're remembering it wrong because all frames, all possibilities, all images, all potential outcomes for you exist right now. And you are remembering. Remember what a memory is. It's just a mental image. It's an imaginal act. So whether you're imagining it as a future wish fulfilled or imagining your or revising your past, remembering your past differently. It's all an imaginal scene right now coming from your current identity, who you are, right? That's powerful. So this person, one person I think on the channel said, can you explain why other coaches say that if you imagine in third persons, others get what they want? And they said they tested it thousands of times and that's been the, that they proved it. That it's not just theory, it's facts. No, it's your facts. It's your theory. Of course, if you test it thousands of times, you're going to get the same outcome because that's what you believe, right? That's just what they believe. You decide that your source, your imagination, you are that awareness, and then all things are possible no matter how you imagine it. That's powerful. So remembering yourself and your reality as you would like it to be or would have liked it to be, the idea of Neville Goddard's revision, right, your memories, that creates it here and now. It doesn't matter, it's all memory. Before Abraham, I am, means that everything else is already there. Creation's finished. You're remembering what part of creation you want to experience, that you want to project, that you want to reflect as a physical 3D experience. A memory is a mental image, an imaginal scene, an assumption, a view, your reality and your entire life experience. A memory is an assumption. Hear this, you think you're right. You think these memories exist, they're just assumptions within you. And you get to assume whatever you want. You're creating those memories here and now. They don't exist in the past. They, they, you create those memories and those scenes, those images here and now by who and what you're being. You create your entire life experience, past, present and future, here and now. There is no past in the past. There are no past images in the past. There are no past experiences in the past. They're all created here and now. Memories are potential frames of reality. They're frozen frames of light and possibilities to be remembered righteously or not here and now. And when we say righteously, remembering it the way you would like it to be, not the way that you believe it appears to be or appeared to be as a physical experience. You create it all here and now by what you decide. So, but, and, and so I, we talked about this. This is the quote from Chris Kelvin, that main character in the 2002 movie Solaris, which I've talked about in several older videos now. It says when he's back to earth, I was haunted by the idea that I remembered her wrong. Somehow I was wrong about everything. Yes, you're gonna be wrong about everything when you don't remember things or imagine things the way you would like them to be or the way you would have liked it to be, you're wrong about everything. Because you are that all that is, that I am awareness. Before Abraham, I am. You are that. You're all possibilities. 
all potential. There's nothing you're missing. You are fulfillment. You're complete. But then, and that, they call that in Scripture the Son of God, that Christ consciousness, that, that, that Christ, the Son of the living God, the Son of God, the, the awareness of being, everything that you want to be and are already. Right? That awareness of being. The first manifestation of God or that isness of reality. That's who you are. And then as the Son of Man, imagining and remembering yourself in a physical experience, that creates it. But remember, you're not remembering who you were. You're remembering who you are now. There is no who you were. You're all realities right now. You create that identity or that horizontal you that you believe existed in the past based on who you are now. How you imagine who you are now, not will be, but now, creates your past, present, and future. You see, so you're never really imagining a future, a future outcome. All those outcomes exist now, and, all the, and you're not remembering a past thing that happened. It's happening now as you remember it by your self-concept. You create that, these thick, uh, solid lines represent the physical experience, but remember, the dotted lines represent them changing in every moment. You're creating your entire horizontal experience by remembering and imagining reality. And when you Im imagine it and remember it as you would like it to be, or as you would have liked it to be, you change your entire life experience, past, present, and future. That's powerful. So. There it is. All of those frames exist. You're the center of the divine mind. It looks like they're all parallel to each other, but actually there's, they're all one superimposed over another, creating this being that you are, all this isness. But they exist, all of these exist within you and you within them as all that is. You exist in and as all memories, all frames, all images, all thoughts, all assumptions, all identities, all versions of you and reality. Not just in the frames, that you judge or remember right or wrong. In other words, not just the frames that you, did, that you remember an undesired reality or you imagine an undesired reality or you remember a desired reality the way you would like it to be or you remember your wish fulfilled or not fulfilled. All of that, all of those frames of memories exist here and now and they're all complete part of who you are. You're complete, fulfilled, so it's about integrating all of these experiences and then deciding as the total being of all experiences, all the things that you judge as good or bad or right or wrong or desired or undesired or fulfilled or not fulfilled, you are all of those that creates this utter ultimate fulfillment that who you really are. And how you imagine and remember yourself to be creates your entire life experience. This is powerful today. So, Chris Kelvin, in the final scene of Solaris, in the opening scene, it shows him in his kitchen on Earth before he goes on the spaceship to Solaris. And he cuts himself and he bleeds, right? And he's trying to hold it in and, and hold it and keep it from bleeding. The final scene, as he returns from Solaris, as he gets this idea that somehow I'm, I've been wrong about everything. In other words, I've been wrong about duality and relativity, the good and the bad, the right and the wrong, dead and alive. I've been wrong about all of that. He knew this, and it, they show him cutting himself again, but then immediately it heals. Meaning you're whole, and instantly you're healed. That's the true reality. He's now seeing himself for who he really is. Then he sees his wife, who died by suicide, on earth. And he asks her, am I, dead, am I alive or dead? And she answers very powerfully in this scene. You can Google this scene, the final scene. Am I, if you just Google Solaris 2002, am I alive or dead, you'll see the scene. She answers, we don't have to think like that anymore. We don't have to think like that. We don't have to think in terms of good and bad, right and wrong, fulfilled and not fulfilled, dead or alive. You are the great isness of reality. You are that great I am. You are the I am awareness that can be, do or have anything. Right? It's about moving beyond the duality of good and bad, right and wrong, wanted or unwanted, here and there, now and then. And remembering yourself, others in the world, in reality, as you would like it to be. Right? Or revise it, Neville Goddard's revision, as you would have liked it to be. 
but always remembering it as you would like it to be now. Whether you believe it's something from the past, present, or something that occurs in the future, it's all happening here and now, right? Absolutely fulfilled. See yourself as that complete, whole, and absolutely fulfilled being here and now. That changes everything, past, present, and future. You're right. You don't have to think like that anymore. You don't have to feel like that anymore. You don't have to assume like that anymore. You don't have to imagine like that anymore. You don't have to remember yourself unfulfilled anymore. That's powerful. How remembering your wish is always fulfilled manifests it instantly. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, thank you. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for liking and sharing and commenting on the videos. Thank you for being part of our Facebook group, the ambassadors at facebook.com slash groups slash Be Something Wonderful, for joining us on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen, TikTok at Be Something Wonderful, and for being part of our membership channel. We have our next live event this Sunday, August 11th at 12 noon Atlantic Standard Time here in Bonaire. Join us, that's also 9 a.m. Pacific Time U.S. So you can join us, it's the regular time we do our live streams. But for me, it's gonna be 12 noon this time. So tune in, and don't forget, even if you don't get to tune in, it's gonna be available on the membership channel for viewing almost immediately after the live stream. I'm gonna be answering your questions live on the chat, and also the questions you've been sending to info at besomethingwonderful.com. Creators with great love, with great light, infinite gratitude. This is Tom Kieran here in the studios of Be Something Wonderful. Until next time, we'll see you soon.